What's up everybody? In this video, I want to talk about the importance of a 100-yard rusher versus the importance of a 100-yard receiver. On the screen, I have the player who has had the most 100-yard rushing games between 2011 and 2018 in LaShawn McCoy, and the player who has had the most 100-yard receiving games in Julio Jones. In this pass-happy NFL era that we are in, you would think that a 100-yard receiver is probably super important, and it is, don't get me wrong, but which one is more important, a 100-yard receiver or a 100-yard rusher? Let's start by finding who won more often, the 100-yard receiver or the 100-yard rusher. Here is every game that I could find where a team had a 100-yard rusher or a 100-yard receiver. And I also looked at the games where teams had two or more 100-yard receivers because in the 100-yard receiver column or row, if teams had multiple 100-yard receivers, I just counted it as two wins, two losses, or two ties. So that's why I decided to add the two, the multiple 100-yard receiver row as well. But according to winning percentage, having a 100-yard rusher appears to be the more important formula for winning. When a team had a 100-yard rusher between 2011 and 2018, they won 72.7% of the time. When they had a 100-yard receiver, it drops to only 55.9% of the time. And the percentage goes down even more when you had multiple 100-yard receivers. Now, of course, this doesn't tell the whole story because when you're winning, you're more likely to run. And when you're trailing, you're more likely to pass. Let's also find out what the average score to each of these games was. Here's the average points for, the average points allowed, and the average point differential in games where teams had a 100-yard rusher, a 100-yard receiver, or multiple 100-yard receivers. Now, I will admit that there is a potential that I made a possible error in these calculations because I did this the hard way, adding every single number up of every one of these games. But these results are still accurate enough for me to tell a story. Now, the argument that, oh, you would run more when you're winning, it does hold merit because of these three categories, the point differential when you had a 100-yard rusher was by far the largest. Now, when you have multiple 100-yard receivers, your points go through the roof, but your opponent also scored a lot. Now, obviously, offensive players don't play defense. And I also want to note that while the average points allowed in the 100-yard rushing games is the lowest, it should not take away the importance of needing to run the ball because that average points against shows kind of the point when you get a lead you need to be able to run the ball and take the clock out and i'm going to show you what i mean let's change gears here's a list of things that could go wrong when you run and things that can go wrong when you pass and then the thing that can go wrong once your receiver catches the ball and I could have missed some things, but the big thing, the worst thing that can happen on a running play is you lose a fumble. Or you could rush for no gain, or you could get tackled for a loss. Now, on a passing play, there are a lot of more things that can go wrong. The worst, of course, being you turn the ball over via interception or a strip sack or something like that. Or you could just get sacked and not fumble, or you can throw an incomplete pass. But even when you complete the pass, the receiver can even fumble the ball when once you complete a pass. So let's find out what percentage of rushing plays and passing plays resulted in such instances. Based on what I found, 3.19% of passing plays resulted in a turnover as opposed to just 0.74% of rushing plays resulting in a turnover. 6.3% of passing plays resulted in a sack. And then 37.8% of passes resulted in an incomplete pass, as opposed to 19.3% of rushing plays resulting in no gain or even a loss. 
Now, when I used Pro Football Reference, I could not find a tool that allowed me to take spiked balls out of the play percentage. So if I had to make a guess, I would, I would guess that the incomplete percentage is probably closer to 34 or 35%. But we've talked about the negatives. Now, obviously, there's positives that we have to talk about, too. Now, the positives of running the ball is that you can gain yards. Or better yet, you can gain 20 or more yards. Or the best possible result is a touchdown. When we go to passing, the positives include you get a completion. Excluding negative completions, of course. And on that completion, you can gain yards. Or better yet, gain 20 or more yards. Or, of course, the best possible result being a touchdown. Let's find out the percentage of rushing and passing plays that resulted in such results. Now, according to what I found, 80.7% of rushing plays gained one or more yards, as opposed to just 55.9% of passing plays gaining a yard or more. Now, please keep in mind that that 55.9% includes sacks. So while more rushing plays gained yards, a huge more percentage of passing plays gained chunk yards, like 20 or more yards. Only 2.6% of rushing plays gained 20 or more yards, as opposed to 8.5% of passing plays gaining 20 or more yards. 3.1% of rushing plays resulted in a touchdown, but 4.2% of passing plays resulted in a touchdown. And that rushing touchdown percentage probably doesn't really tell the whole story because I would imagine most rushing touchdowns are from less than 20 yards and such. Now, a lot of passing touchdowns probably are the same thing, but based on the evidence, we can clearly see that gaining, if you're trying to gain chunk yardage, you should probably pass. So I never really answered the question of the video. What's more important, a 100-yard rusher or a 100-yard receiver? Well, I guess that depends on how you view things. But, based on the evidence, we can clearly see that even in this pass-happy NFL where all the rules supposedly favor passing, it is still a very high-risk, high-reward play. Rushing is kind of low-risk and kind of low-reward in a way, also. But as we saw with the instances where teams had multiple 100 yard receivers the score was very high and you're much more likely to turn the ball over on a passing play than you are on a running play so I guess what I'm getting at is you don't want to get in a shootout you don't want to have to air it out all it takes in shootouts is for seriously just one little thing to go wrong for you to lose that's all it takes just one little thing for you to go wrong but also, I guess one other thing that to be take away from this video is, yeah, passing is important, but running the ball, I would argue, is just as important, if not more important. Yeah, you're not going to get the flashy plays when you run the football, but running the ball wins games more than passing the ball wins games, at least according to this evidence. Now, we obviously saw that the points allowed when a team had a 100-yard rusher was the lowest between having a 100-yard receiver and a 100 and multiple 100-yard receivers. But that's also kind of the point. Run the ball, play defense. That gives you the best chance to win football games. And kind of by a pretty wide margin. Like, when you get into these shootouts, all it takes is for one little thing to screw up for you to lose. Like... I remember a specific game, the Denver Broncos and the Dallas Cowboys. It was 48-48, to and all it took was for Romo to throw that one interception at the end of the game, and that was it. I'm sure there's other instances too, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. What's more important, a 100-yard rusher or a 100-yard receiver? And as you can possibly tell, or probably tell, I am a Detroit Lions fan, and in the links to my description are more Detroit Lions fans. And I'm not just a Lions fan, I'm just a Detroit sports fan, period. And the people in the description are also Detroit sports fans, period. So if you're a Detroit sports fan, 
you might want to check it out and tune to the round table or tune into above the rim. But yeah, thank you all for watching. Let me know what you think and I hope you enjoyed.